For their next painting and travel program, Roger and Sarah visit an antique garden on Clappert Island, Maine. Sarah talks with the gardener while Roger uses oils to capture a picket fence lined with summer roses. Today, Sarah and I are in Maine. It's just a beautiful state. It's the middle of summer. There's just lots of flowers here. These beautiful little roses, they're starting to go by. Petals are starting to fall. But I just love this scene with the roses, the dark green colors, and this white picket fence. So uh, we'll take a few photographs here, and then we'll go back to the studio, see if we can do a painting of this. Here we are in the studio and I have a 16 by 20 inch canvas. I put a thin coat of burnt sienna on here with acrylics so it's totally dry. And I've just put an indication of where these roses and the fence goes in pencil. I'm using oils today and I have a lot of colors out on my palette. Titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium yellow light, Indian yellow, cadmium red, and alizarin crimson. And on this side of my palette, I have sap green, phthalo green, and my three earth colors, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. I think I'll start with my sap green and burnt sienna, just to get a nice dark tone. And just start blocking in some of these areas here where the foliage will be. I'm putting this on fairly thin, and I can still see my pencil marks through it. Having this burnt sienna tone in the background will give me a warm tone shining through here as well. It's not always necessary. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes I can do without that. But I like that warm tone to begin with. Then I don't have to look at that stark white canvas. I'm picking up some of my phthalo green here, which is a very, very strong green. I only have to use a small amount of that, and it goes a long way. See, back here we have a real dark area, so I'll get my ultramarine blue, maybe some, uh, some alizarin crimson, just to make a very, very dark passage right back here. I think this dark passage is nice because it will help these roses stand out light against the dark. Now I'll keep putting my reference photo up here as well, but I'm looking at my laptop monitor right beside me as reference. I prefer that to printing out the reference picture. It's a little more, gives me a little more detail, a little more vivid colors than had I printed it out on a piece of paper. Really at this point I can use all sorts of color combinations from my palette and I'm often asked what color do you use to get this particular tone and all. But the truth of it is that the same color can be mixed in so many different variations of the colors on the palette. So uh, you know, I can make dark colors with ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and uh, green. I can make that really uh, basically the same dark colors with maybe burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. What the difference is, is some of the colors can be warmer and some of them cooler. The values are the most important part of the painting, even more so than the colors. Here I can see in this area, by looking at my reference photo, this is much cooler. This is where the there's a building here, so I'll pick up some cerulean blue and dip into the color that I already have here, make this dark. I'm going to be changing these colors all the time as I go along because I can't get these colors right on the mark, at least I can't, you know, on the first try. So I, I try to get my best guess as to what these colors are and what these values are, but it all changes throughout the painting because it's a matter of uh, comparison one color to the other. And that's what really makes the painting. As I continue with this, I'm going to lose my drawing in here, but this 
really not that much of a drawing here to worry about, except these fence posts, these picket fence posts here. I want to use as large a brush as I can uh, to start this. I don't want to start with a small brush. I'll use my small brush when it comes to some detail work. Right now, the main thing, the important thing is to block in these areas. Down here we have a shadow on the grass, which tends to be warmer, so I'm going to pick up some of the red here, cadmium red. Make that a warmer color right down in there. I'm not using any white at this point. This is in shadow. This rose bush is casting a shadow on the ground here. And then as we go out, this will get lighter. But I'm going to make this dark to begin with. And then shortly we'll start to add some white to this and lighten things up. Those fence posts right there. Just cut around them some so I know where, where they are. Some more on the background, right in here. I just put some circles on here when I sketch this, just to indicate where some of those roses will be. Pretty arbitrary, I mean, uh, I tried to work from the photograph fairly closely, but uh, it doesn't really matter where these roses go as long as the, the painting will end up with a nice composition here. I'm not trying to copy the photograph. What I do need to be accurate about is the spacing of these fence posts. Well, I have my darks in now, and I think I can leave the darks at this stage. Now it's time maybe to start to lighten things up with my sap green and some white. Now right down here, this grass is lighter because it's not getting the shadow from the, the rose bush. What I want to do here is get a nice variation of different colors of greens, warm greens and cool greens. Some that lean more towards blue, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, some that lean more towards the yellows. In here we have the, some more grass. It looks like it was dried up somewhat, so we get a nice yellow ochreish look there. I'm working thin to begin with, and then as I go along, this paint will get thicker and thicker. Picking up some cerulean blue, just a touch of white, and I'm going to use this a bit thin as well. Right back here, this fence is in shadow. And when I'm applying this, I'm not thinking about each individual fence post. I'm thinking about these larger shapes. And then later on, I can put some of the individual fence posts. So these have a beautiful cerulean blue look to them. All these colors are mainly to get myself established in this painting. These colors and these values will change as I go along. Sometimes I can hit it right on the mark, but generally these colors need to be adjusted during the process. As I applied this paint here, I was careful not to put too much thinner in it, because if I did, it would be so wet and sort of slippery that I wouldn't be able to paint any other colors over it for a while. These fence posts down here are quite in shadow. So we'll have those much darker, cooler and bluer there. What I want to do here is get everything covered, fill in all these blank areas. And once I do that, then I'll have something to compare one color to the other. Right now, I'm comparing burnt sienna to cerulean blue. This isn't going to end up as burnt sienna, so it's hard to know if that's exactly the right color because this is what I'm making a comparison to it, all the things around it. So once I get this, these, some of these red roses in here and these pinks and all, then I'll be able to better determine whether this is the right color and the right value. I have a cross brace that comes across here and I, I put some paints over here. So there's two things I can do there. I can either load my brush up with enough paint to cover this like that, knowing that some of this color is going to blend in with this color, or I could wipe it off with a, a towel and start fresh. Right now I'm just gonna cover that over with a bit of heavier paint. 
Just because it's in shadow doesn't mean it's going to be blue. It's going to pick up reflections from whatever's around it, including the sky, of course, which is the, the biggest light source. But since this is close to the ground, it's going to reflect, get a lot of a reflection and influence from this green. Okay, I'm going to put down this larger brush and I'll pick up a smaller brush. This is a number four flat and we'll begin putting in a few of the roses. I'm going to mix my cadmium red and alizarin crimson and some blue in here, some cerulean blue, sort of a dark purple color. And these flowers are very light, but I want to get a little bit of indication of these darks in here first. That's too dark, so I am going to add some white to that. And as I go, I'll change the color on this. Some will be bluer, some will have more red in them to make some variations here. Now it's a fairly dark painting at this point, but I wanted to leave room for some nice highlights, especially on the edge of this fence. And of course for the flowers. Right in here, we have some nice sunlight hitting this patch of roses. I seldom work from multiple photographs and combine them into a painting if I can help it. Uh, it's hard enough to do a good painting, but then when you have to work from several different references and several, several different photographs, it becomes more complex. So by working from a photograph that pleases me to begin with, that uh, solves a lot of my problems, especially compositionally. I need to start varying my colors here. So I'll take this light red and I'll add some cerulean blue to it. We'll make it just about as light as the red here. So this is about the same value. You see, if we were to uh, turn this into black and white, this red and this blue are the same value, same lightness or darkness. But of course, one is warm and one is cool. But we're gonna put some of these cool flowers down here, but they'll still be just as light. Well, I think it's time to start working on some of these greens in here. These are much too warm right now. Sap green, yellow ochre, and I'm going to indicate these leaves in just a quick sort of loose style here. Now some phthalo green, it's that real strong green. Painting is almost like directing an orchestra. That's how I feel when I'm putting on these brush strokes. I feel like I'm conducting some musical symphony. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'll begin to put in some very light yellow greens. Make this look like the sunlight's hitting certain parts of this bush more than others. I also have to be aware that when I look at my photograph, uh, it's not showing me all the values and the tones that I could see in real life. Since I can't be there, of course, it's the next best thing. But a lot of the dark areas in the photograph, there's not much happening in there. If I were sitting in front of this rose bush, I could see inside that area, and I could see much more going on as far as color goes. That's why it's good to paint outdoors. I, so much more can be learned by painting out on location than in the studio. Although it's really nice to paint in the studio, it's, so much more controlled. So there again, you know, it's with acrylics or oils or painting outdoors or painting in the studio. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. We visited an island in Maine. While we were there, we saw some beautiful gardens. I'm going to let this dry a while. While I do that, let's take a look at these gardens. We're visiting our friends Al and Don Hoffman on Clappard Island in Maine, their private island. And Rose Lacasse is going to talk with us about the garden. She has uh, worked on it for a number of years, and there were some difficulties establishing or re-establishing it because of having to bring everything over by skiff. Mm -hmm. 
And how did you accomplish that? Um, <laughs> one plant at a time. You know, you're loading it up from the mainland and you're bringing them here. It's just one plant at a time. Arduous. Yeah, it very. And there, so there are three gardens here, and I guess there was some sort of outline left from years back. Um, I don't know. I, actually, what was really here was a lot of barberries and scrub brush, and you know, the place had not um, taken care of for many years. And uh, these are just beautiful, these little. Uh, Thank you. Fairy, fairy roses, yes. They're very low maintenance, and they're just absolutely a delight every year and they will bloom right into November. So many of the flowers here seem perfect for making table arrangements and I've noticed you've got some cuttings right yes. now. Yes, yes. I'm uh, going to refreshen the flowers before Mr. Hoffman arrives. Um, what other um, well, uh, features are there for the garden? What I try to do is I try to find flowers that um, sort of um, last a very long time. And I let things kind of happen, and then I, I will, I'll remove things that I don't like, but um, it doesn't happen very often. I'd like to see another part of one of the gardens, if we could walk over to it. Certainly, we have an antique garden down below that was here historically, and um, I'd love to show you. I'd like to see the antique garden. Well, we're entering the antique garden, and I understand it's over 100 years old. And behind us, of course, is a fabulous-looking playhouse. And I love these blue hydrangeas. Yes, everlasting. Everlasting? Mm -hmm. And what other um, flowers did you decide would complement the garden? How do you figure out your plantings? Well, um, originally there was nothing here but a lot of trees and weeds, and I wanted that to be sort of like a moon garden. What? makes this a moon garden. In a moon garden you would plant white flowers so you could see them at night and nice scented flowers. I can hear some ospreys in the distance mm -hmm. and also the, the gentle hum of some boat engines mm -hmm. out there. You know I love having a distant view with other islands in it. It's very interesting. It's nice to look at at the ocean but to have a view with some other features I, mm -hmm. I think that's just really fun. Yeah. It's been delightful. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help us and understanding how you created this lovely garden. We stayed on Clabbert Island for about a week and I did several paintings while I was there, mainly of the shoreline. Well, this painting has been sitting here for a couple of days now. Uh, it's mostly dry. A few areas that were thicker are somewhat wet. But I'm going to continue on now and start with some more of the light greens. Well, this seems to be the area right in here that is catching the most light. And I think this will make a nice composition to have a lot of light areas right up in here. I don't want a lot of light areas here in the center, so I want to spread this around. For about a decade, I did nothing but large abstract paintings, and many of those had a floral theme to them. And I'll show you a couple of them now. Most of these were very large paintings, and I did over a thousand of them. And the reason I know that is I numbered them, starting from number one. <laughs> They were all done in acrylics, and it's interesting to note, some of those paintings were done very thick. And even after many years, uh, the paint has not cracked or deteriorated in any way. I can't say that about the oil paintings that I've done in years past. Some of those have really cracked quite a bit. So I'm approaching this in, in many ways like the abstract paintings I did many years ago. Just very loose. I think down here I'm going to cool this down with some more blues. Now in my reference photo, this fence isn't as blue as what I've painted. I may adjust that. I don't want that too blue. It looks somewhat out of place, but there again, this is all about adjusting colors as I go. I thought that was probably the right color to begin with, but as I put in all these other colors, I've discovered that it's, it's just not quite right. Okay, I'm going to mix up a color here that I think might be more appropriate for this fence. It's just too blue. There's a nice white highlight right on the edge of this fence. So I don't want to get this too light because I want that highlight to show up. Ultramarine blue, bit of burnt umber. That'll gray this down. And we'll catch this side over here the same way. I can let some of these blue areas show through. I don't necessarily need to cover them all. At this point, I start looking away from my reference photo quite as much, and I start thinking more about how the 
painting itself is going to look. I don't want to become a slave to the, to the photograph. With my white and a touch of yellow ochre, I'm going to lighten this fence right back here. This is probably one of the lightest parts of the painting right back there. Although I don't want this to jump out at me. I do want it to show up because this is where the sunlight is really hitting this hard. Well, the highlight right on the edge of this fence is important. So I'm once again going to take my white and yellow ochre and I'll grab a ruler and I'll just hold it up here and with a very light touch I'll drag this down. Now the paint on the end of my brush here is quite thin, so it flows off my brush nicely. I have to load my brush up when I do this. I'm just using this ruler as a guide and putting my finger on here. I'm careful not to put the ruler against, against the painting. I'm, a bit away from that. And we'll move over to the left side of the painting and do the same thing here. It's a loaded brush. That paint just flows right off the tip of the brush. I could actually use a better brush, but when I put this paint on, I twirl my brush like that. And that gives me a, a point on the end of the brush. Load that brush up again, twirl it to give me a point, and then I have a highlight on the back side of this fence here. Right here, we're going to start to lose some of the sunlight. I'll move to the top and do the same thing. Here, the sunlight catches it more than down at the bottom. I think that's all I need with the ruler. I'll put that away. With the dark color of burnt umber and ultramarine blue, put in a few branches. And I'll just drag these very lightly, very softly across here and there. And I'll let these branches disappear in amongst these leaves. I'm holding my brush very loosely here while I drag these across. I think I'm going to jump around now a lot. I've got my basics in. Now I can start adding more detail and more detail, although I want to keep it kind of soft and sort of abstract at the same time. On the ground, we, there are some rose petals that have fallen off. I can put a hint of those in right here. Some of these will be in, in the light. Some of them will be in shadow. Right over here, we have a light patch of sunlight on the grass, so these petals here will be lighter with my yellow and white and some green I already have mixed there. We'll start to add even more sunlight up in a few of these areas. I'll just let this brush sort of dance along here on its own. And down here, a few more highlights. It's good because I'm covering up a few of these branches that I put in there. I think I had too many. Glizzer and crimson, I'm going to make this rather dark. Add some cerulean blue to that. Just the glizzer and crimson alone looks rather false. Just looks like kind of the wrong color. That often happens just by using one color out of the tube. It's just too identifiable as a lizard in crimson or ultramarine blue or cerulean blue, so on. So it's often good for me to add a second color to some of these, just so it doesn't look quite like a manufactured color. And I think I'll pick up more of the light yellow and echo some of these bright greens down here in the grass. I use the edge of my brush here. Using the edge of the brush helps me to keep this painting somewhat looser. It's not really a goal. I don't have to have a painting that looks loose, you know, but uh, 
it, it is often nice, sometimes easy to get caught up in too much detail. And it's really not the detail that makes a painting strong. It's the, the big areas. With my cerulean blue and alizarin crimson, I'll put in a few hints of the center of these roses. Just put a little dot here and there to indicate that. I'm not going to indicate any petals because these are just too far away for that. And maybe right down here, the same thing. I'm going to put more white in this green here because some of the sunlight is hitting these leaves and really reflecting off the leaves. I can see that in my reference photo right up in here. It's not much color in this green. It's just a, almost a cool white. This is quite a solid mass right here. I'm going to put some negative areas in behind here with some grass. So I'll mix more of this background color of the grass. Yeah, it's about the right color. And I'll just indicate where some of these fence posts go by using some negative areas right in here. So these are nice flat areas. Maybe one right here. See, that will define those posts. Then I can take some of this warm white and put another highlight right on the edge of this fence. Well, I've enjoyed working on this painting. I'm going to sign it, then we'll take one last final look. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.